Hey folks, Jackto here. I'm back from a week of travel for work and a quick little holiday and today we're delving straight into the latest update on Dragon Age Dreadwolf and the current state of Bioware and EA in 2023. There's some significant information to cover today, especially in light of EA's recent decision to reduce their staff by over 6%. So to be upfront, this news today isn't particularly positive and stick around until the end as I'll be sharing my full comprehensive thoughts on this entire situation. But kicking things off straight away to get a clear picture of the situation, I'm going to objectively break down this entire narrative, peeling back each layer of the story. Because I've waited a little bit longer to do this, we now have more of a full story. So our starting point is General Manager Gary McKay's recent update on Bioware. Essentially, Gary announced a strategic shift towards greater agility and a focus to meet the demands of upcoming Bioware projects while maintaining quality standards. To to achieve this, Bioware are undergoing a reorganisation that involves the elimination of around 50 roles in the studio. The decision, though quote painful, is aimed at positioning Bioware for success in an evolving industry. Gary goes on to state that this transition is aligned with Bioware's commitment to delivering exceptional single player experiences, exemplified by upcoming games like Dragon Age Dreadwolf and the next Mass Effect. The impacted employees will be provided with support and opportunities within EA's other studios. The dedication to the quality of ongoing projects remains steadfast and Bioware is confident in its ability to ensure the success of Dreadwolf and maintain its commitment to delivering world-class gaming experiences. The article then concludes with a message of gratitude to the Bioware community and anticipation for the studio's future endeavours. Once more, Gary states that the Dragon Age team are excited for us fans to see Dragon Age Dreadwolf at a point when they decide to reveal more in the future. Definitely not something that we've heard like 20 times in the past year. Now it's worth noting that Electronic Arts as a whole is laying off around 6% of its workforce. This isn't exclusive to Bioware as reported by the Wall Street Journal as EA continues to reevaluate its investment strategy. That 6% comes to around 780 jobs eliminated within EA's operating studios. Even further, VentureBeat reported that Electronic Arts has also passed Parted ways with their playtesting company Keywords. In 2022, a team inside Keywords voted to unionize. EA's existing contracts with these playtesters at Keywords runs through September 27th. A source told VentureBeat that EA and Keywords continued to make new business deals together after the unionization vote in June 2022. The parting of ways now is apparently due to the two companies not being able to come to terms on a new deal, the report said. Prior to all of this, EA also made other big moves within Bioware's network. In June, EA removed Bioware as the developer of Swator, shifting development duties over to a third-party company, Broadsword, which I covered at the time. Going back to the Bioware departures, while I may not personally know each of the 50 developers who have sadly faced layoffs, several of them have taken to Twitter to announce their immediate departure. And here are just a few notable individuals that I saw online. We have former producer Renata Cronin, former narrative pro programmer Tim Griffith, former Foundation Technical Director John Renish, who I've talked about a lot on the channel, former manager Brian K. Lee, former writer Mary Kirby, and another former writer Luke Chris Jansen. Absolutely massive departures just from the few right there, and this news is just undeniably devastating. I don't even need to continue into the next update to say that undoubtedly this represents a significant setback for the Bioware team, and I think even for those who have managed to hold on to their positions, the survivor's guilt that they feel must win really heavily. To shed further light on this very distressing situation that feels like it's came out of nowhere, VentureBeat correspondent Jeff Grubb, who we've talked about a lot on this channel, has provided further context and insights. During a recent episode on Game Mess Mondays, hosted by Giant Bomber, Jeff Grubb delved into the recent developments at Bioware, particularly the recent workforce reductions. Additionally, Jeff has also gone on to suggest that the release of Dragon Age Dreadwolf might be postponed until early 2025 due to a series of internal setbacks. So firstly, addressing the broader context involving EA, Grubb speculated that the original plan for Dreadwolf was to unveil it in the upcoming month of September 2023. However, this timeline has experienced successive postponements, pushing the potential release to March 2024 and now even subsequently to the summer of 2024. This release window, he emphasised, is susceptible to further shifts. And Grubb has hinted at the possibility of the actual launch 
tranche falling anywhere between the summer of 2024 and the conclusion of the fiscal year in March 2025. Just to quickly pause for one second, the idea that Dread Wolf could have came out in September of this year with no marketing whatsoever planned is absolutely crazy, especially with the bustling month that we've got in September anyway, with Baldur's Gate 3 just releasing Starfield around the corner, the new Cyberpunk DLC, which kind of like a rework of the entire game, Assassin's Creed Mirage, just an absolute crazy time for games anyway. Dread Wolf launching in that busy time period with no marketing for me, that is just absolutely crazy, especially at this current point where we still know nothing about this game. Now, moving on to why all of a sudden EA have decided to lay off 6% of their staff. Apparently the motivation behind this stems from EA's internal restructuring, whatever the hell that means, right? It relates to their financial burden no longer being sustained solely by FIFA and Madden, you know, EA's annual sports cow caches. The responsibility apparently shifted to Apex Legends after Battlefield encountered many performance issues. Not for a fact the previous Battlefield had quite a rocky launch but it took quite the financial hit too. Now unfortunately since Apex Legends took over that financial responsibility it also encountered many challenges even further necessitating job cuts. Kotaku got on to report that EA laid off around 200 Apex Legends testers in February over a Zoom call and as EA continues to cut back spending they've also announced that they plan to shut down Apex Legends Mobile in January and halted development on the mobile Battlefield title it began working on. And even further EA reportedly have cancelled a new Titanfall single player game as well. Which is just an absolute flipping nightmare. I know that we're not really Titanfall or Apex fans here but hey I absolutely loved Titanfall 2 and hearing that that was in development and has now been cancelled is an absolute shame. But regarding Dread Wolf's development Jeff Grubb shared that for a while it was like Dragon Age could have come out this year. Now in response to the personal reductions Grubb claimed that members from the Mass Effect team would now be reassigned to work on Dread Wolf and consequently progress on the forthcoming installment of the next Mass Effect game is also expected to be slower than initially anticipated even though that project is still in pre-production anyway it's going to take even longer. Clarifying the potential impacts on the development of Dad, Gary McKay did assert in his statement that quote if you're wondering how all of this will impact the development of Dad let me be clear that our dedication to the game has never wavered but at this point we still know nothing about this game haven't seen anything and can't really hold that statement to full confidence especially if Jeff Grubb is coming out here stating the exact opposite. Okay so now it's time to share my full on thoughts on this. While I understand that this decision ultimately falls within EA's purview and it isn't solely the responsibility of Bioware or Gary McKay for that matter, first of all the timing of this announcement is just absolutely unfortunate. It arrives at such a particular inopportune moment for Bioware, coinciding with the incredible successful launch of Baldur's Gate 3, a project that radiates passion and meticulous craftsmanship from Larian Studios, a European AA RPG studio operating independently of external publishers. Paradoxically it feels like an unintended twist of the knife for Bioware, kind of representing what Bioware used to be before you know they got in bed with EA. And even before this update happened everybody was already looking at Baldur's Gate 3 and comparing it to what Bioware have to do with Dread Wolf, what people are going to automatically compare it to just given the nature of what BG3 is. However the true sorrow in this situation lies in the collective heartbreak of the numerous developers who poured their creative energy and dedication into shaping the upcoming Dragon Age game. These individuals who have embarked on this journey of breaking into the games industry, relocating to Edmonton to contribute to Bioware's legacy and they now find themselves caught in the tumult of layoffs, all because these projects quote no longer align with EA's strategic focus end quote whatever the hell that means. Like could you be any more specific? Now Bioware despite bearing little responsibility is now shouldering the weight of revenue shortfalls stemming from other sporting projects and Apex. The situation casts a glaring spotlight on EA's prior statements regarding the profitability of single player games and especially holding in that a single player Titanfall game has just been cancelled too. Even further with the decision to release these talented developers it only reinforces the narrative EA has been pushing, a narrative that raises unfounded doubts about the financial viability of single player games. And this scepticism gains even further traction when considering the tumultuous development journey that Dreadwolf's already had. I know I don't need to remind my entire audience but Dreadwolf originally conceived as a multiplayer live service endeavour very much recently in 2021 or late 2020 underwent a completely significant pivot towards a single player focused game, that being midway through production. Now I suppose in the grand 
grand scheme of things, perhaps Anthem was envisioned as a more significant success, especially given its initial 10 year live service plan. And I suppose now with Swartor under the management of a different studio, Bioware does appear to be losing some financial autonomy. Ironically though, in some weird scenario, we can't entirely fault EA for Anthem's failure considering they granted Bioware a generous six years to work on it, considering it was their original concept, Bioware wanted to create a new IP and they chose to do Anthem. So I suppose in this possible scenario, yes, it's probable that Anthem was meant to generate more revenue, fueling the development of Dreadwolf and the next Mass Effect game. However, since that didn't pan out as expected and Anthem didn't reach the financial success or the praise that Bioware initially envisioned, Bioware and EA now found themselves facing this unfortunate scenario. And definitely not in comparison, but just as exasperatingly, we find ourselves in an even more prolonged wait for Dreadwolf. As for when we might catch a mere glimpse of this game, I'm left uncertain, especially if Jeff Grubb's sources are true and Dreadwolf has most certainly received an immediate delay. Like, we've been told this game's an alpha that's the second last stage of development and it's beta and it's launch. We all assumed this game was coming out spring next year, potentially late next year, but now with a studio restructuring and less staff all hands on deck, it certainly sounds like we're going to be waiting longer for Dreadwolf. And repeatedly the teams have expressed their eagerness to unveil this project to us. They have shared how excited they are, but unfortunately time and time again our expectations have been met with letdowns, much like the unfortunate news that we're facing right now. And I know that we're not really that bothered about Mass Effect and we're not even thinking about the next Mass Effect game, but when we do contemplate the future, I just can't help but wish that Dreadwolf will mark the end of the Dragon Age series. And the reason I say that it just stems behind this endless wait for Dragon Age Dreadwolf, the constantly shifting development landscape and the subsequent number of developers who have departed or have now been let go from the Dragon Age team. And as someone who has constantly fostered positivity and optimism as a Dragon Age content creator on YouTube, and I know that it is quite a negative environment on this platform, especially around Bioware and Dragon Age, and I try so, so hard to remain positive, I must confess that right now maintaining that optimism and my composure is becoming increasingly challenging, and I don't want to just pretend that things are okay when it certainly doesn't seem like there are. And I don't want to sit here and lie to you as well, I do want to be straight up and honest with you. It just does not feel like things are going so well. And even if Dragon Age Red Wolf is an amazing, fantastic RPG and it surpasses all of our wildest expectations, it's even sad just thinking about the developers who had worked so, so hard and who had been at Bioware for so long, like Mary Kirby and Lucas Johnson, and they've been laid off because of EA's own insufficient financial needs. Like, no matter how good Dread Wolf will be, that thought is still going to be in the back of my mind. The dedication of the developers who have stuck and have stayed at Bioware for so long and they get tret like that, it's just nothing is going to take away that feeling. Whether major developers have voluntarily departed Bioware to explore new avenues in the industry, or the few remaining dedicated individuals have been unceremoniously laid off, the outcome is the same. A significant shift in personnel away from Dragon Age Dread Wolf. The departure of developers has emerged as a substantial warning sign for Bioware's projects in recent times, starting with Andromeda, then Anthem, and then continuing with Dread Wolf. The situation as a whole is just truly startling and my heartfelt wish extends to those impacted, not just at Bioware but throughout EA's various studios. I really hope that they find their footing and emerge from this challenging phase stronger than ever. Ultimately, I am of course dedicated to following Dragon Age Red Wolf through to its entire launch. I'm absolutely going to be covering this content. I've actually already recorded a video about three weeks ago talking about Varric and a few other narrative things that I'm going to be releasing very soon. But and I mean, I'm trying to think of like a happy conclusion here, but there really isn't one. Like loads of people have lost their jobs because of this. It's not fair. It's not right in the slightest. And all I can do is just hope for the best for them and equally hope for the best for Dragon Age Dread Wolf. That, you know, it's going to be a brilliant game and the hard work that they have put into this is going to be worth it in the end. But I'm definitely down to continue this conversation down below and share all of your thoughts. Do you actually have any positivity to bring to this conversation? Are there a few things that you may know that I haven't picked up on? Please let me know down below. But until the next one, of course, you are already in the right place for all your things on Dragon Age, Bioware, and everything going on in this crazy studio as we slowly follow the launch of Dreadwolf and hopefully onwards onto Mass Effect. But until then, I should go. Whoa, 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 whoa